Okay, so here we are, about 6,000 foot elevation, right on the border of Wyoming and Nebraska, okay? There's not a whole lot to look at for anybody who's driven through this area, but uh, once you look a little bit closer, okay, it turns out there's actually quite a lot. Now, all I was trying to do was just look for a spot to piss, okay? I had about three cups of coffee running through me, and every time you drink coffee, you, of course, got to compensate with uh, about one and a half times as much uh, water because coffee's a diuretic. You know, you get, you get a little too amped, and then you get a little dehydrated. But I was just looking for a spot to piss. That's all I wanted to do. And then I ended up seeing a whole bunch of cool shit out here. And uh, now we're going to take a little look, see what we got. But we'll start off with this guy. Well, first, first one is a uh, uh, kind of a native weed, okay? Native to North America, that is. Verbenaceae is the family. The Verbena family, the Lantana family. Lamiales is the order, the order of, uh, of sages, which helps explain why uh, so many plants in this family tend to smell rather pleasant like lantana does. This is a species of uh, verbena. It's one of the prostrate ones, and you see it in Nevada. You see it all over the place, frequently on the side of the road. The reason you get a lot of plants growing on the side of the road is because that's where you get all the runoff. Anytime it does rain, even if it's just a little, uh, you know, they're going to be the first to get it. It's, it's basically acting like a trough to just funnel water uh, right, to, right to them. Over here we got a species of heterotheca. Okay, another DYC, damn yellow composite, very glandular, okay, another uh, kind of weedy native, all right, not much to look at yet, but just bear with me, it does get a little bit cooler, let's keep walking on, walking on down the road here. Now, I will mention, and I noticed from my travels as a young man, uh, you know, in my uh, uh, former years, it just, uh, you know, mostly I tried to ride freight trains and getting around, but occasionally uh, we'd have to hitchhike, and, uh, and I would mention that during those, uh, you know, those uh, those times hitchhiking, I did find a lot of interesting trash on the side of the road. Okay, uh, probably most interesting were uh, you know of course drug baggies, uh, you know eating utensils and uh, and dildos. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, there were a lot of dildos on the side of the road. I think you know the misery of driving induces things like stress eating and masturbation. Okay, probably I don't know. I don't know why people would feel the need to discard a dildo unless they were getting rolled or something. I guess I could see that. I guess I could see that. Anyway, moving right along, here we go. Here's a member of the uh, Marigold tribe, the Tegidae. And uh, because it's in that tribe, it does smell quite good. This is Disodia paposa. And if you get close, you can see those orange glands on the uh, involucre there. The involucre, remember, is the just basically the, the sides of that capitulum, that flower head. The flowers are tiny, a bunch of little tiny yellow bastards in there, and uh, you could see why this is kind of a weedy species too. Oh, that's that's, a, that's from a dandelion. But uh, you could see, here we go, here's the seeds. See those tiny seeds with the pappus? The pappus for the wind dispersal on them, okay? All right, let's, uh, let's cross the road, see what we got going on now. Yeah, here, now this is nice, this is nice. There's a surprising array of natives here I just got a grass, uh, grass seed in my ass. It felt nice, nice stabbing. This is a species of Mirabilis in the four o'clock family, the Bougainvillea family, and the Taginaceae. This is Mirabilis linearis. Big giveaway for this family, of course, is those opposite leaves down there. Okay, see these down there right there too? Opposite leaves, okay? And of course, they got, uh, they got petaloid sepals. They don't have true petals. The flowers are basically done. Are they though? Are they though, or is it? Yeah, they're basically done. Those are the seeds right there. Okay, probably, you know, it's probably a lot more lit up and showy looking when, uh, you know, when you catch it in flower, but even now, still cool to see. Okay, you got, uh, got you know, a bunch of stems branching off from a, a perennial uh, base, perennial root, and, uh, you know, massive uh, nectar source for the pollinators and whatnot. Maybe I'll take a couple of these seeds, spread, help it, help it get around. Okay, massive nectar source for the pollinators when they are going off. Okay, pretty interesting to see this guy. Nectaginaceae is a great family. Caryophyllales is the order. Okay, same order as cactus and beets and spinach and all that shit. Okay, got I only got a couple of these guys. They're only on this side of the road. You know, we're out of trash. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm willing to bet there was a dildo here at one point. Okay, I guarantee you. America's fucking dirty when you get down to it. Okay, America's lewd and lascivious, even especially when they try to pretend they're not. Okay, I, I bet you know someone with a dildo under the, the front passenger seat of their car. 
okay? I'm willing to bet money on it. This is where it gets even more interesting, okay? Just boring grass. Looks like a bunch of boring grass with just a smattering of Helianthus annuus, the sunflowers. But then you get down close, look, we got our friend Ligodesmia juncia again, okay? Ligodesmia juncia with those photosynthetic stems, very minute leaves, and uh, and of course, you know, just like that other uh, Dysodia I showed you, you got those seeds with that uh, that hairy pappus for the wind dispersal, okay? Very interesting, very, very, very cool plant. Okay, again, the chicory subfamily. Okay, no disc florets, entirely ligulate florets, entirely ray florets. Okay, and again, with those five teeth on the ends of the rays. Now, let's keep moving along, and I'll show you some of the other stuff I've seen, including a species of Opuntia, which we got right here. Okay, miserable bastard. Okay, I love him, but he's a miserable bastard. I could say that about the quite a few friends of mine. Okay, Opuntia fragilis, spiny as hell. Ah, fuck! I didn't see that one there. Oh God! Now, okay. Not only do, does uh, this plant uh, have the spines like most uh, cacti, but it's also got those barbed, uh, those barbed spines, like uh, many uh, plants in the uh, Opuntioid subfamily of the Cactaceae cactus family. This really hurts. I might have to put the camera down for a minute. You know, take this out with the uh, Leatherman. Go. All right. Now I want to. I want to stress how cold it gets here in the winter. We are, we're already at 6,000 feet. It doesn't get that hot here in the summer. Maybe 80, 90, okay? It's a dry heat, but especially in the winter, it gets extremely cold. You ever see those, I mean, you, when you're driving through Wyoming, for Christ's sake, you can see those wooden slat fencing, those snow fences on the side of the road to keep the snow drifts from blowing over the goddamn uh, I-80 and shutting it down, okay? But there's there's that guy, so that, and, and this is a, a, a massive uh, food source for the pollinators, two big yellow flowers when they're going off, tons of nectar and shit. Got that heterotheca, of course, okay? AKA the telegraph reed. You might know heterotheca grandiflora, uh, which is a very common, almost three or four foot tall weed uh, out west. Often see it growing along uh, railroad tracks. In fact, I think that's why it was called telegraph weed because it was frequently beneath the telegraph lines. Now, we got some more interesting bangers down here. Let's keep looking and uh, what the fuck is that? I'm gonna piece of cardboard or all kinds of foam and I don't know what the fuck people you know people people are weird you can tell a lot about a about a people by their garbage all right moving right along oh, yeah now, now, now this is nice this is pretty good okay Spheralcia coccinia okay the family obviously is Malvaceae the cotton family chocolate's even been placed in this family now too you can see those palmate leaves okay very distinct palmate leaves and more importantly, that androgynophore, see that yellow column that's got both the male uh, stamens on it, the male parts as well as uh, the stigma up top. But you'd have to get a hand lens to look at it because it, uh, it, is, it is rather tiny. Five distinct petals, and then you, you look at the calyx, look at that green calyx, five distinct uh, sepals. Well, they're fused at the bottom. I guess they're not distinct. They're fused at the bottom. But uh, look, at it, look, at it, look at the texture of that leaf. Oh, it's so scabbard. It's like the sandpaper, huh? Like the sandpaper, the sandpaper when you take the belt sander to my fanny. You know? Is it? Am I making you blush? You sick fuck? Are you into that? I'm just kidding. I would never shame somebody for stuff like that. Okay, moving right along now too. We got a lot. We got a couple more interesting uh, guys to look at. Where's the other one? Where's the Artemisia? I just seen a goddamn Artemisia. Okay. All right. There we go. Here we go. Artemisia frigida. Okay, in the wormwood genus Artemisia, the wormwood and a sagebrush genus, not to be confused with sage, completely unrelated plant, sagebrush Artemisia, okay, Artemisia frigida, and this is one of those, uh, tend to be uh, generally higher latitude plants, you get it in Europe too, it's probably one of those things that the, the biogeography of this was, you know, once, uh, I guess probably, you know, a lot of things at higher latitudes you get both in Europe and North America, okay? Because uh, obviously you got less, at higher latitudes, you got a smaller diameter circle up there. Uh, if you're looking down at the globe, things can get around easier. Arctostaphylos uva ursi tends to do that as well. You know, it's almost uh, a circumpolar, okay? But again, it's high latitude. Anyway, this guy, you can see those tiny flowers. Uh, you know, Asteraceae is the family. Almost looks like an ambrosia. Almost looks like a little uh, ambrosia flower, okay? There's tiny, tiny little flower florets in there. 
So it's a flower head composed of a bunch of tiny little florets. Okay, and then there's that, there's that, ooh, it's lacy. It's the lacy foliage, huh? Just like the lacy foliage, the priest, the lacy uh, underwear the priest sometimes wear. Never mind. I'm so, my friend and some of you probably, you know? Just sometimes the religious guy, the religious people do, they get into some weird stuff, you know? So maybe, maybe he's wearing some uh, lacy underwear beneath that cloak, okay? Doesn't matter what religion, seems to be a universal human trait. The more you repress people, the weirder they get. Okay, anyway, Artemisia frigida, okay? Low growing prost prostrate, almost said prostate. Huh? Is that wishful thinking on my part? Maybe I need some. Maybe I need to get a check. Now this was this was pretty good. This was pretty good. I wasn't expecting to see a physalis up here. I wasn't expecting to see one of the ground cherries. Okay, Solanaceae is the family. Of course, this is physalis hispida. Okay, known from Colorado, western Nebraska, Wyoming, and a western Oklahoma. See, and I got the little uh, paper bag lantern, little paper bag lantern fruits. See that? And there's a little berry in there. Look at this fucking, fucking, you know, I'm having trouble opening this one-handed. Wish I had the dog around to help me, you know, but they didn't want to come out. They're, they're, they're relaxing by the truck because it's a lit. It's not that hot, but they don't like the sun. I think they're done. Maybe it's a form of protest. There you go. There's a the fruit. Okay. Some, some members, you know, talk about Physalis Peruviana. That's a delicious, probably the most delicious uh, fruit of all the nightshades. Okay. But some of them, you know, you never know. The chemistry varies. Maybe this will maybe this will make you puke. I don't know. Can't I can't say. Okay, I have no inclination to eat this, but uh, if you do, go right ahead. You let me know how it goes. Okay. <laughs> it's I assume no liability. There's those little flowers, and uh, do they have the porous lanthers too? That so many of the uh, the Solanaceae do. I would assume they do, but I can't. I don't have my hand lens with me, so I can't see. All right, here we go. But there you go. See, just it's like a creeping physalis with rather large leaves, and of course they got that. Uh, shiny waxy coating on them to uh reduce uh the uh moisture loss as well as the uh intensity of that the solar radiation okay this is uh this is crotalus viridis territory the uh, prairie rattlers and they're pretty venomous though i think they're one of the more uh, one of the more dangerous species of rattlesnake very quite beautiful but i'm not sure if i want to you know have an encounter with one right now too bad it's not blooming but uh very, very velvety leaves, very strigose leaves, just leaves covered, just covered in tiny little hairs. How about that? Pinnate, uh, pinnate leaves, of course. I love it. I love a, uh, I love a dirty, crazy pea. Look, it's a piece of foam. We got another piece of foam. Some piss bottles. Okay. Thankfully, not closed. I right? don't need that wonderful caramel color in my life right now. You just imagine what it smells like. Of course, we got our Helianthus annuus, our sunflower. Very scabbard, very scabbard like sandpaper. But, uh, you know, I don't have much to say about that. I mean, those are everywhere. I like them, but they're everywhere. This guy's a little bit more interesting. Member of the poppy family. Got some, uh, some quite toxic uh, secondary chemistry in his tissues, as you'll see by the black resin. Uh, which is uh, evident on some of these fruits. Jesus Christ, this is a prickly poppy. This is our gemini. Look at it, nice little scrambled egg flower. Up here in the dry grasslands of uh, western Nebraska and eastern, uh, eastern Wyoming. Look at it, just covered in spines, okay? Okay, and if the spines aren't enough to get uh, any of the herbivores then I, I mean, I guess they're all extinct now, or you know, extirpated from the area. Can you imagine what? Can you imagine what 22 million bison must have fucking been like? Now you just got a bunch of cows as dumb as a rock. Always pisses off the vegans when I say that, but they are immensely stupid animals. But only because we've bred them that way. Okay. Remember, things are a lot easier to control if you've uh, you know uh, conditioned them to be stupid. Okay, that goes for people too. There's these. Uh, there's the fruits. There's the fruits and then and, uh, the wonderful flower. Okay, dozens of stamens surrounding that the uh, ovary and uh, that uh, tip by that uh, that brown stigma right there. Quite nice, quite a nice plant. But if those spines aren't enough to get the uh, herbivores to not eat them, then that, that very toxic secondary chemistry uh, will certainly do the trick. It'll make you puke, maybe even kill you. Okay, let's see if I can find a good uh, good bleeding stem. 
There you go. There you go. See that? I don't believe it's black when it comes out, but uh, once it oxidizes, it turns a thick, uh, turns into a thick black tar. Okay, remember, uh, you know, all the, the alkaloids that uh, are used to make opium, all right, that was their initial purpose in this family as well, in the poppy family. Discourage your bivory, okay, not to get the, <laughs> not to get entire families hooked on prescription opiates in, uh, in America's heartland. But that's, uh, you know, once you synthesize them and put them into pill form, that ends up being what happens. All right, let's keep, well, let's hop the fence. Forget about the grim subjects. Let's uh, focus back on maybe finding a dildo in the grass here. Dildo in the grass. I've seen it once or twice. Dildo in the grass. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, yeah, banger alert. Here we go. You might be familiar with the uh, genus known as Liatris, a.k.a. the Blazing Star. It's not to be confused with the other Blazing Star uh, common name genus, Menzelia. Okay, no relation whatsoever. This is a member of the Asteraceae. And judging by those long-ass styles, look at those long-ass forked styles, purple styles coming out of there. This is a member of the Eupatoriae tribe, okay? Which is, you know, Joe Pieweed, uh, quite a few genera, and they, but they, they all tend to have those long-ass styles come out. I believe uh, Agratina's in that the tribe too, maybe even Stevia, but uh, the genus Stevia, but there you go. Blazing Star, look at those long uh, Corolla lobes too. Beautiful purple flowers, okay? And then the, the, the involucre, I mean, the whole goddamn capitulum is rather cylindrical and elongated. The involucre has multi serial filaries, okay? See the bracts, the bracts, and uh, almost looks like a sessile uh, capitulum, a sessile flower head uh, right there. I, I love this fucking, this genus is incredible. You get some that are four feet tall, you know, massive food source for the pollinators. I believe this is a Liatris punctata, okay? And it's grown rather small here due to, uh, you know, the, the dry, arid landscape. But, uh, he's gonna fucking go punch it. That prickly pear is brutal. How do you like to step on that barefoot? Jesus Christ. There's, there's one more plant I wanted to show you over here. These are nice fence posts. They make it easy for hopping. Okay, that's nice sturdy. Okay, unlike, you know, if you just take like a branch of juniper or something, throw it in the ground. Okay, you fall, you break your ass on it. Now, where the hell was it? Oh, there we go. Okay, this guy's, this guy's pretty interesting. Look at all the fucking, another Artemisia right here. Look at that. Look at that. Well, it smells nice though. It does. Okay, the wormwoods. Okay, the absent. <laughs> oh yeah, it smells, it smells pretty good. Again, but again, those are just the, uh, it's secondary. It's the secondary chemistry to discourage your bivvy. Okay, make you quite sick, or can. But look at this guy. This guy's an invasive. Okay, and it's kind of pretty. Not gonna lie, it's kind of pretty, but uh, it is kind of a bastard. Okay, this is a Linaria, Linaria dalmatica, from Europe and Asia. Plantagenaceae is the family, the snapdragon family, and uh, you could see basically that's that's all it is. Just a snapdragon. Okay, but I'd much rather see a native penstemon than this guy. But I will note, he's not acting, you know, he's not forming a massive uh, monoculture. Just, uh, you know, he's, he's not going wild. I don't know, maybe he just got here. Or maybe he just, you know, he's not that invasive. Naturalized, but not that invasive. Okay, but maybe he'd be invasive as hell in another landscape. I don't know. You know, if the ecology changes... You know, you never know with invasive species. Sometimes they could just, uh, or with the non-native species, sometimes they could just naturalize. They're not too bad. You know, Epipactus helaborin is kind of like that, that a uh, non-native orchid. Other times, you know, they could just go buck wild and form monocultures in a, you know, cause the uh, local extirpation of uh, some of the native species and end up being a real pain in the ass to deal with. Here's that, the, here's that Mirabilis again. Anyway. Well, that's all I got for you today. Hope you enjoyed that surprising amount of diversity here, uh, just on the side of the road, uh, and a surprising lack of dildos as well. I haven't even seen any bottles of trucker piss. Oh, wait. I don't know. I can't tell. I'm not opening that one up. But uh, anyway, you know, you could do this too. It's nice. You get off, the, get off the fucking road, go take a leak, and see what's growing there. Okay, just pay attention to the ecology. You know, forms the fucking skin of the planet you live on. Might be worth paying attention to, huh, jackass? All right. Uh, hope you have a good uh, rest of your day right there. Go fuck yourself. Bye.
appears I spoke too soon. Here we go. Classy. Keep it classy, America. There you go.